Vedic Shloka. See, in the beginning itself, he started telling us that there are two units. One is the body called the Kshetra or the field. And the other one is the Kshetrajna. Kshetrajna we may consider it as the God of Mark or the Rizatma. So there are two th distinct things in us. One is matter, that is body. The other is the spirit, that is Atma. And he showed in the third one, in the third verse in the very beginning, Kshetra Kshetra Jayot Jnanam Yattar Jnanam Matam Mama One should know about, thoroughly about, what is the relationship between Kshetra and Kshetra Jnana. What are the characteristics of the body? What are the characteristics of the Atman? So, he has started after that delineating the qualities of the Atman. Till the twelfth shloka here, he will be telling us what is Atman like? What are the qualities of the Atman? What are its weaknesses? What are its qualities? What are its characteristics? Its attributes? Whatever it is. So that is what he is describing. Yes, Atman cannot be described. But it is being described in a different way. I mean, it is a, it's a negative way in a way. In the sense, you cannot say what Atman is. But you can definitely say what Atman is not. The entire world, whatever you see, whatever you hear, that cannot be the Atman. So whatever you, it comes within the jurisdiction of rise, of your vision, it, it's not the reality. Thus, while delineating it, we have come to the eighth shloka. We did the first line. Abhinashi Dutar Vidhi Yena Sarvam Idam Tatam Vinasha Mabya Yasya Nakaschit Kartu Marpati. No, that is Atman can never be destroyed. You put a mega bomb, you put a hydrogen bomb, you put an atomic bomb, Atman can never be destroyed. Avinashi, the one which, has, which can never be destroyed. We earlier has already said, weapons cannot pierce it. The air cannot make it dry. Water cannot wet it even. And uh, fire cannot burn it. There is nothing which, uh, to which it is vulnerable. It is invulnerable because it alone is. Everything is its shadow. How can a shadow burn its original? It is not possible. So, you see, another thing is, why it is Abhinashi? Why you can't destroy it? The reason is, Yenatarva Vidam Tatam. Whatever article you are going to use to kill it, that is made up of this Atman only. So, Atman will not harm himself. It is not possible. So, Yena Sarva Vidam Satam. Everywhere, Satam means Yaktam, pervaded. It is all pervaded. Everywhere is pervaded. You see, there are two things. It is so subtle. When something is so small, so subtle, it is very difficult to do anything with it. You can kill a fat person easily. To kill a small ant and a fly is more difficult. Because it is still sushma, it is more subtle. Uh, in Keno Pinisha, there is a beautiful anecdote to show how the subtler a thing goes, it becomes um, immune to any destruction. It so happened. There was one year battle in the Asuras and they were celebrating it. Indra, Agni, they were all the various devatas, the air, Vayu, they were all celebrating it and they were telling, well, I did it, I did it, I did it. So they said, why I did it? The entire team, we did it. After all, nobody can do it. All the victory is the Lord's. All the failure, victory, everything is in the Lord's hand. It is He who has written the entire city. They were another. So the Lord came in that prison as a pillar of fire. This is what happened in Arunachala. 
He came with a lot of pillar of fire which they couldn't understand. They thought it must be some divine being, some semi-divine being. Otherwise nobody else can have entrance into this place. So they are at a distance. They are afraid to go near it. Then at last Indra being the Lord, he tells Agni, Hey, you go, go and find out what is that Yaksha. Give it some Yaksha. What is this divine being, semi-divine being? Find out. Where now it has come suddenly over here. He goes very near. Suddenly he finds. The power of the Lord, whom we call the Divine Mother, the Shakti, who is also known as Parvati, who is known as Uma. Uma is standing there in all the scriptures. They bow to her and ask her, Madam, can you tell me what is this? She said, before that you tell me who you are. Then she says, I am Agni, I am the fire. What can you do? Oh, there is nothing on the earth which I cannot burn. Then she places a very small uh, dust there. A small piece of uh, dust like this. Very, very small. She, she gives it. Trina. Trina means a small blade of grass. It is very, very small. Come on, burn it. With a full power, she tries to burn it. It remains as it is. It is not burned. So, with a head bent with shame, he goes back and reports his failure. Then the air comes. Yes, who are you? She is asking him. I am the great Matanishwa, Matanishwa means the air who permits everywhere. And there is nothing on the air which he cannot blow off. She tries again, blow off anything. Oh, so nice. She plays the same blade of grass. Come on, blow it off. With all his might, he did. If it were a tree, he would have blown it off. If it were a house, he could have blown, blown it off. But this is so small, he <laughs> blew it off. It was very, very small. When she looked at him, he was ashamed. He blew it off. This is how the story goes. So, this subtler you think is, it is very difficult to destroy. It is not possible. You can't even move it. You can't shake it. And here is a, the Atman, who is the subtlest of all. You cannot even see, nobody can perceive him, except with those divine eyes. So, Vinasa Abhyaya Syasya He is Abhyaya. Abhyaya means the one who will have no change. Immutable, unchangeable. And it means there is neither a diminution nor an accretion, nor an increase in his qualities or qualities, nothing. Neither in quantity nor quality, there will be no change. See, now we people, we grow. And after some time, we begin to decline. We begin to have decay, decay of the body, decay of the senses. All these things happen. But the Atman, it remains as it is, as fresh as it was at all times. So, Abhyayasya Asya, Vinasham. So the destruction of this which is imperishable, which is immutable, na kaschit kartumarvati. Kaschit, na kaschit means nobody in the world. Nobody can do it. This is not in the world. Nobody can do it. That means, even God cannot destroy the Atma. Why God cannot destroy the Atma? Why God cannot destroy the Atma? Because he is the Atma. God is the Atman, God is our self. It is only a terminal So he will not destroy himself. And even if he wants to destroy himself, how will he destroy himself? No weapon can pierce the Atman. So fire, water, whatever he has got, nothing can do. So he cannot even commit suicide. If there is one person who cannot commit suicide, it is God. Everybody else can. Nobody can cause any harm or destruction to this Atman. Atman is in the See, again and again, again and again, Bhagavan has said only two slogans from the very beginning to show that Atman it is invulnerable, it is always permanent, it, it never had a beginning, it will never have an end, it is not possible to destroy. The idea of this, as I was telling, everybody. 
body is afraid of death. See, death seems to be looming large like a democratic sword over our head. If only somebody were to be told on the say, 30th day from today you are going to have death, he will even have it much earlier. Because from that day onwards he will be afraid, he will not know what is happening, he will immediately feel that as if there are some beads which are missing, he will go to the doctor, doctor cannot find anything. So all the things will start. So Bhagavan wants to tell us, look here, you are all immortal. Every one of us is immortal. The fact that you and I can never die, we are immortal. It is known even to a small child. You give a 10 rupee note to a small child, keep it, this is my gift on Pungal Day. Now the child has kept it in his notebook, in his copy book and kept it. Two days later it opened it, the notebook was there. 10 rupee note currency was not there. It does like this, no, nowhere to be found. Now, the child can never think, oh, my note has died. It knows, no, it has gone to a different place. It cannot, somebody might have taken it. So it, it would have only changed his hand, somewhere else it has gone, it can never die. So he will go and ask his mother, Mommy, who took my note, the currency note which you gave me, I kept it in my note. So even a child knows that there is nothing in the world which can die. They are going to transfer of place. It can go from here to somewhere else. And secondly, life to live eternally, it is something natural to us. It is our birthright. Right? For the world. And that is why when something abnormal happens, you always question. When something which is normal is daily happening, you never question. See, I just heard that a friend of mine, who till yesterday I was talking to, he expired his study, he died. The moment I hear, I thought, what happened? What happened? How did it happen? I say, yesterday evening I was talking to him, because you find that death is something which is abnormal. That is why you are questioning. Otherwise, every day you are coming, you are seeing Shantananda. Does anyone come here and ask me, Swami, you are alive? You are alive? You know, you never question. When a man is dead, you are questioning what happened. You don't come and question, you are alive. What happened? You ask? No. Because you take it for granted that Shantaranda will never be there. He is the Atman. So he has, he is immortal. So this is a common fact. We are always immortal. The Vedas say, Amritasya Putra, Srinvam Teme, Amritasya Putra, Kheri, oh, uh, the immortals, Amritasya Putra. Sons of immortality. So we come to the next. Nasato vidyate bhavo, na bhavo vidyate sataha, ubhanyota vidushtum taha, vanayo tattva dharshidi. Now, if you read the translation, it may not make that much of a sense, so it will look like a riddle. Asataha means that which never exists. That is that which is unreal. Na asataha bhavaha vidyate. That which is non-existent, it will have no existence. That which is existent, it will always exist. It will be what happened there? This Bhagavad Gita is a part of a big book called Mahabharata, which contains one lakh slokas. This book contains 42. The entire Bhagavad Gita contains 700. The entire Mahabharata contains one lakh verses. When Lord Vyasa, see, he couldn't write one lakh slokas in an old man, so he wanted somebody to write it. So he got hold of our Lord Ganesha, our God with dust, the elephant headed God. He requested him, please, I want to write one lakh locals. Whatever I say, please take a dictation. He said, okay, I will take a dictation on one condition. 
the conditioning as then when you go on talking i will go on writing the moment you stop to think something for five minutes or ten minutes i will leave the notebook and go away i will never come sit and i will write the answer is very difficult how to she can go on uh, telling one lakh shlokas in between we have to think we have to plan so he put a counter condition i agree to your condition provided whatever verses i tell you should understand its meaning if you don't understand its meaning till you understand i will not go further so whenever vyasa wanted to think a little she will put one shloka which will look like a riddle so by the time the ganesha would solve the riddle vyasa would be ready now the rest of the shlokas so this comes in several places even in gita there are at least some four five occasions where such riddles come the riddle there is no riddle in it the idea being it is nasatva vidyate bhavah see what happens is in this world we divide all the things into two categories one which is reality one which is unreal what do you mean by reality by reality we mean that which existed at all times and beyond time at earlier the time also that is supposing you see something in between only you neither saw earlier nor you saw later now for instance there is a pot now this pot did not exist 10 years back this pot was manufactured just we are here back so it has come so it never existed in the past now it is existing before you after about 5 years when i come this pot is missing when i asked mr shri the reason oh that one day it fell down it broke so the pieces were all blown to the winds so this pot existed only in the middle it didn't exist in that past nor did it exist after some time so anything which exists in the middle is only a temporary appearance it cannot be real prakadeshu abhaditam vastu satyam vidyate anything which stands the test of time of the past and the future which had always remained in the past go beyond 3000 years beyond 50000 years beyond 2 million years it existed and before time came also it should have existed similarly a thing which will exist 20 million years later 100000 million later billion years later and beyond time even after the deluge it should last and that is called the reality so in between whatever comes it is only an appearance just as it were dream your dream it didn't nothing of it existed yesterday and nothing will continue tomorrow so this dream and he gave me a water bottle he took the water bottle and went in 
search of water. He went for miles and miles. At last he found a lonely cottage. He went and knocked at the door. He found a beautiful damsel, a young girl, aged about 16, 17 years, opening the door. She asked him what he wants. Narada was so um, taken up with her form. He was just looking at her like a fool. He forgot what he had even come for even though the bottle is there. Then she asked, you want water? Uh -huh, I want water. Uh -huh. Is there anybody else in your house? Yes, my mummy is there. Uh, please call her. When the mummy came, he just took her aside. Look here, I want to marry her. He said, the only condition is, you can't leave this house, you will live here. He said, at any cost, I have to marry her. I can't remind you of that. Okay. He married her. He reminded the house. He got four children. About 70, 80 years past, he is becoming an old man almost. <laughs> and one day, he found a huge breast coming and flooding the entire area. He took his wife, took his children, and he was waiting for the press to find out some place where he could seek shelter or refuge. And the flood, when it came high, he couldn't help it. First he left out one child, then he abandoned another child, all the children were gone. He said, yes, if my wife is there, I make it children later, it doesn't matter. So he kept his wife. And it so happened, his wife was also lost in the flood, he was all alone. Then after drifting here and there, finally absolutely tired, frustrated, grief-stricken, he reaches the bank somewhere. He breathes deep. And then he begins to be bold Lord. Why have you taken away everybody you could have left at least to one? Is this fair on your part? And suddenly he finds there is no blood, nothing is there. He is standing near Narayana and Narayana is asking him, Hey, where is the water bottle you took? You have not brought water, I am waiting for it. <laughs> the, the entire thing happened in its life. It looked as if 80 years have passed. You may recollect that in your dream, you just came out of the university as a postgraduate. You went to Calcutta and you got a job. You remind us a professor for 40 years. From time to time you were visiting professor at Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge. You were going on, seeing it so nice. 40 years of life you spent. You got up. Saw the watch. 11 o'clock you went to bed to 11.50. So in 15 minutes we have lived 40 years of life. It looked so true. It looked so real. The entire thing was a dream. It was unreal. So an unreal thing has no real existence at all. It just comes and goes. That's all. So it has never got any basic plan. That is what he said. What is asat? That which does not exist. What is it that does not exist? Now, supposing there is a pot. Supposing there is a pot, does the pot exist? As I told, number one, this pot was not in existence five years back. This pot is not going to be later. So naturally, this is only an appearance. Apart from that, there is also another process. Whatever which has come out of a cause, wherever there is a cause and effect, a tree coming out of the seed, a pot coming out of clay, there is all cause and effect. Wherever a cause has changed itself into an effect, it is a temporary feature, it is only a change, it is not a permanent stand. Now, you call it a spot, but actually it is clay. Top to bottom there is clay, there is nothing called a pot at all. If you ask me, please define what do you mean by a pot? This is only, you see everywhere, this is clay, this is clay, the top is clay, bottom is clay, middle is clay, everything is clay. What do you mean by that? So you can't say. Similarly, supposing he has got a dhoti, he is wearing a dhoti. See, it is all made up of so many strings. Can you say what is the dhoti? 
Dhoti is only a name which you gave for a change in spring. The springs, you know, they join together and then you call it as this. Similarly, all the play of two portions join together in a particular form. Only the form change, but it is a real play only. So, how can we call it a part? So, the part exists, it is only a name, there is nothing called a part. You only put a name for it, otherwise, it is not that. Now, you come to the body. You are telling this is my body, this is my body. Can you tell me what is the body? This body is made up of skin, blood, muscles, tendons, blood, bone. Can you tell me where is the body then? No. It is only an assembly of various things that who gave a name as a body. There is nothing called a body at all. So your body is unreal. Your body never exists, it is unreal. Your part never exists, it is unreal. It came from the cause clay. Now, is clay real? The clay is not real because this clay was made from the Panchabhutas, that is the air, fire, water, space. So all these things put together, yeah, this has come into existence. This mud or clay has come into existence. There is never something called the clay at all. So if you go up to the top, finally what is real? There is only one reality. All that is objective, all that is an object, all that can be seen, they are all made of cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect. There is nothing which remained originally till now unchanged. Everything is only temporary. Whatever is in the world, one day or the other, take hundred years, one day fifty years, one day thousand years, it will disappear. It cannot remind. So, this entire world of which your body is also a part, so this entire world is unreal, this body is unreal, it has got no existence because but how do you say, I am feeling everything looks real where I can touch each item, I can touch this book, how can you say it is unreal? This is just like in the dream, this again, what you are now seeing, it is a cosmic dream and you and I are the dream figures, that's all. Just as in your dream, you saw 20 elephants, 30 hunters in the East African forest at Dar Salaam and they were not real. Because if they were real, when you woke up, you didn't see a single elephant, a single hunter, where did they disappear? So even though it looked very, very real at that time, when you saw the elephant, you were all perturbed, oh, this 20, 30 elephants have completely surrounded us. We have no ammunition left, except in one gun. So we won't be able to escape alive. So every one of you was perturbed, you were all talking, now what to do? how to escape from this. So everything looked very, very real. There is nothing unreal about it at that time. But in the ultimate analysis, you found that the entire thing was unreal. Now, even in your perception of one item itself, there is a portion of reality, there is a portion of unreality. How? I am seeing a pot. Then, I get two knowledges about you. There are two consciousnesses. One consciousness says, pot. So it recognizes the pot and it says pot. Now the other consciousness says, is. Is means it exists. So it exists and something exists. It is, it is there before me. Something real is there. So you have got two consciousnesses. One says part, it recognizes the part. The other says exists. Now, the one is real, the other is unreal. I just told you a part is unreal. So, you are conscious of the part, part is only a temporary thing. This consciousness will not remain forever. As long as the part is there, it will remain. The moment the part is not there, the consciousness will go away. So, that cannot be. That which remains at all time, that can only be the Atman. That can only be real. So here, this portion is unreal. But something definitely exists. The existence is not wrong. So existence is the reality. That is what you call Sat. Sat, Chit, Ananda is the Atman. So existence 
and you understand it exists, so that is called chit, such chit. It's a bit uh, <laughs> the philosophy I am going into according to Shankara, but we will can understand that, understand it. There are two consciousness. I will put it the other way, an example which you know very well. You are coming here to Ramanashram at night, it was about 8 o'clock at night, the electricity has failed. There was something lying there, it was actually a rope. It was lying a tree for curls. And you said, oh my lord, I have heard in Ramanashram there are serpents. Oh my lord, it is at the very entrance, it is about 6 feet long. So you thought it is a serpent. Now, the, the thought comes, it is a serpent is, a snake is. Now you tell me, mother, is a snake in reality? But the existence in reality, something existed, the rope existed, so there was an existence. Only thing is, it was not that thing. The existence is true. Supposing nothing existed, the place was empty. Are we fools or mad to imagine a serpent wherever there is none? Unless you are mad, you cannot see a serpent where there is nothing. So something was, something is, something existed. So some existence was there. On the existence, through a delusion, you constructed a serpent. So that serpent is unreal, while, I mean, this is only a relative way. In the absolute way, even the rope is not real. Because the rope is made up of earth, fire and water and all also, it never existed. Uh, three years back, it is not going to exist ten years later. I am only giving you the relative view of it, that is that. So, nasato vidyate bhavo, that which is unreal. See, in uh, philosophy, how the reality and reality we see. Unreal means, which cannot exist anywhere on earth at any time. That is what we call as unreal. The examples are, I have told long back, whereas the composition of the audience is new. There is a shloka which says, Tatra Mandhyatato Yati, Kapushpa Krita Shekhara, um, Shashashinkan Grihitvacha. See, some fellow is telling, look here, there is one child going, he is the son of a barren woman. A barren woman, how can he have a son? So it is unreal. Something which cannot exist at any time. Then, not only that, he is uh, beautifully decked with flowers, flowers which were obtained from the Akasha, from the space. How can there be flowers in this space? Kaputva. Kaputva means flowers which were in the sky. So the sky cannot have flowers, so it is unreal. And then he is carrying in his hand a horn, a horn of a rabbit. Rabbit doesn't have a horn. This is like a horn at any time. So the entire thing is unreal. All the three things are unreal. This is a classical example to give us an idea as to what is unreal. So a thing which has never existed, which only appears, that is only a form. It is only a delusion. It is a delusion. It never existed at all, at any time. So that is what is called unreal. So this body which you are seeing, number one is only a name. Even whatever you see, you see the blood, you see the hand, you see the feet, they are all unreal. They are not going to be there because this body was not there some 80 years or 100 years back. This body will not be there another 200 years later. So naturally this body is unreal. So that which is unreal cannot have a permanent existence. You cannot call it as existing. So that is what he says. Asataha means unreal. That is like a body. A body which is unreal for that Bhavaha na vidyate. Bhavaha means existence. It does not have any existence. That is, it ceases to be. An unreal thing ceases to be. It is not that. Similarly, a real thing never ceases to be. It is always there. Because a real thing means it is it always exists. And existence can never be destroyed, it will always be there. Existence is a fact. So, sataha abhavaha na vidyate. Sataha, for a real thing, for reality, abhavaha, absence na vidyate. Absence can never be there. That is, an unreal thing 
can never cease to be. We are real thing, it always is. An unreal thing can never exist. It is all only an appeal. So that is the meaning it's supposed to be. You see, our commentators have written pages and pages. So I could only spend a few minutes, even this, uh, many will be a little bit too much. Ubhayavarapi drishtomta anayosthatva darshatihi. So who has found it? Whose definition is this? He says, this is a definition by those scientists who have done research into these matters and gone to the depth of it and have analyzed what is real, what is not real. Only those people have come to this conclusion. He says, Ubhayorabhi Antaha is both the things, that is reality and unreality. In respect of both, Antaha, Anayoho, Bhayorabhi, these two which we are mentioning. There is reality and unreality. Anayo means these. So the reality and unreality in both of these things, antaha bhaktaha, the conclusion has been arrived at. By whom? Tattva darsibhiki. By those seers of truth, people who have gone to it, people who have done research to it, people through meditation and by cogitation and by reflection who have thought about it, and who have come to the conclusion after seeing various cases and it is those people who have categorized it and who have given this definition as to what is real and what is not real. Now we go to the next one. Yatha sarva gatam saushnyati akacham nopalikyate sarvatra avadhito dehe akatma nopalikyate You see what happens is, uh, supposing you are seeing in the olden days, nowadays the TV has come, in the TV also you can see, there is a big curtain on which the projector projects all the images of the city. So in the cinema, there is one cinema called the Inferno. There, we have a big uh, multi-story building of a hotel. People are all there enjoying in the various floors. Suddenly the entire building goes into confrontation of flames. It is in fire. And how those people are in difficulty and the various reactions and all that is described in the city. So even though for hours to do that they were showing the raging fire, that curtain was not affected, curtain was not broken. So in a similar way, Atman is there with us it is with everybody and each one has got his own characteristics. Somebody is crooked, somebody is straightforward, somebody is a doctor, smelling of all uh, antiseptics, the tall and all that, and uh, somebody else is a butcher, smelling of all the uh, flesh and other things which has cut. But none of these things adhere to the Atma. Atman has not taken up any of the qualities, any of the uh, characteristics of this body, these senses, this mind, this buddhi, nothing has affected. By being along with a crooked mind, my Atman has not become crooked. My Atman remains the same. And supposing I have not taken bath for 20 years and smelling badly, and uh, there is supposed to be a test of good sannyasi, the more he smells, he is going to be a to Atma. So, so, but the Atman in me, it can never smell badly, it cannot sting, it can never sting, it is always having its own fragrance. So that is what he is now telling. Yatha sarva gatam saushnyati akasham nopalikyate Just like a space, now, the space is there, the vast space is there. So many things are being kept. That said, you are keeping 20 tons of garlic. And garlic, you know, it gives a very bad sting. And at another place, cut onions, you are keeping some thousand. And at another place, you are having beautiful scented incense sticks, what is called the agarbhati or udhubhati incense sticks, which uh, give us beautiful scent and all that. 
And in addition, you keep a lot of scent bottles imported from France, in Tibet and all that. Now, because all these things are there, does the space, does it get any of these qualities? Does the space here reek of garlic smell? Does the garlic here uh, reek of onion smell? Does the space here uh, is fragrant with a beautiful scent? The pay, the space remains unaffected. Why? Because the space is something which is very, very subtle. You cannot perceive it. Nobody has seen space, just as nobody has seen electricity. These are all absolutely subtle, sutra, imperceivable by ordinary eyes. And the space perhaps can never be seen even with your electricity. This space, which is everywhere, sarva it is all permissive. But it is very subtle, saushnya, because of its subtlety, because it is so subtle, sukshma, sukshma se bhava saushnya. Saushnya se na upanishyati, it never gets tainted. Tainted means nothing sticks, no smell sticks. None of their characteristic comes and sticks to it. None of their qualities come and stick to it. So it is untainted, it is unpolluted. So, na upalapyate, upalapyate, left means to come and stick to somebody. So, they don't come and stick, so it is untaped. Na upalapyate. Similarly, sarvatra dehe, this atma, this atman, katha in the same way, this atma, sarvatra dehe avakitaha, dehe in the body, it is there in the body, avakitaha, Atman is there in the body. Not only in the body, Sarvatra is everywhere. Atman is outside, Atman is inside, Atman is above, Atman is below. It is an ocean of Atman. Only thing is, you don't see the Atman. Now where is that space? The space is inside this, inside this chamber. It is outside this. It is on this side, it is on this side, it is on the bottom. So space is everywhere and it is inside also. So similarly, this Atman or Self, it is inside the body, it is outside the body, it is everywhere. Sarvatra Dehe, in the body, everywhere. Sarvatra. Avatthitaha, it is there present. Atman is present in all the places. And it is along with the body. The body has got various qualities. It may be fragrant, it may be stinking, it may have sense. And the Indriyas, especially the mind, the mind may be thinking how to burgle the bank or the mind may be thinking how to go to Ramanasam and go on doing meditation for 20 years simply in mom, not talking to anybody. But the Atman is not affected by any of those thoughts. Crooked thoughts, straight thoughts, righteous thoughts, unrighteous thoughts, sinful thoughts, nothing affects So, na upalapyate, not only that, the body does a lot of actions. Because when you are doing a bad action, when I am stealing something, in the next birth, I have to have a punishment for it. When I do some good thing, I am giving a lot of money in charity, then in return, I will have to get a reward in the next birth. Because every action has got a reaction according to the second law of nature. So, the reaction, it is already inbuilt in the action. Supposing you are going to shoot a gun, from the shoulder, after you shoot, the gun will come and hit you back. That is called a recoil. And you cannot say, I don't want the recoil, I only want to shoot. The reaction is already built in. You can't avoid the reaction. Similarly here, we don't get the reaction in the same bar. The reaction is kept in store to be distributed in the future months. That is what happens. So this punya or papa, the good deeds or the bad deeds you have done, the reactions, the body may have to suffer, Atman will suffer. Atman doesn't have any of this punya or papa. It is beyond good, it is beyond bad, it is beyond immoral, it is beyond moral. It has got nothing to do with it. It is beyond it all. Na punyam na papa, na dhaukyam na dhukkam. That's all. It is beyond all these things. So, Tathatma Mopalityate, in the same way, Atma never gets tainted, it is pure. So, another 
two more shlokas where he is going to still describe his Atman and then he will begin to describe you are the Atman but nowadays there is death on you, death on you so you are unable to recognize that Atman how to remove that death that is what sort of spiritual practices we have to do what are the qualities we have to cultivate or imbibe and what qualities we have to leave so that we will be able to find ourselves in our real form that is the pure Atma. There will be an external internal harmony. Today we are all in turmoil, tension. The tension comes because inside there is an Atma which is pure, so it is inspiring you towards purity. But unfortunately from far to far we have been conditioned with so many impurities. All those impurities are sticking in your computer memory which is called the Chitta. So that is not allowing you to do as you want. So it is motivating all your actions. Do like this, do like this, bright the chat. Uh, you have to take this away, you steal this. So it is giving the advices and you are falling a prey to those aggressive thoughts which are called the sanskaras or the vasanas or the conditioning. So how to remove those things? They will all be coming after another second, from the third shloka.